We just passed through 42 degrees latitude on our way south and the sun came out and it's warm and I'm gonna get out of this stuff. I'm so hot. This is literally the first time I've been able to take these Fowleys off for like a week and a half. No boots, no Fowley pants. Suns out, guns out, baby. No socks. <laughs> Oh, yes. That's nice. I'm gonna go lay in the sun. Because apparently I am a lizard-like creature, according to Mark. I've been offered to board a plane bound for Hawaii. Get on a boat I've never seen, with people I've never met, and sail 3,300 nautical miles across the Pacific Ocean. What would you do? The boat in question is a 1984 Mason 63, designed by Alvin Mason in the late 1970s. Mason had, in his early career, worked for John Alton, whose famous designs include the Bristol 35, Fuji 45, and many custom schooners. Having also been the head draftsman for Sparkman Stevens, he took many of the design elements from the yachts he penned over his career and put them into his legacy boat, the Mason 63. The crew includes Mark, the owner of the boat, his daughter Erin, her boyfriend Jake, and my buddy Ryan. Yeah, okay, I know one of them. Needless to say, after 30,000 miles on a catamaran, I was more than a bit intrigued to see how this beautiful yacht would handle herself in the deep blue. I'm gonna go take a shower. Undressing is difficult on a boat. <sighs> I did it. I'm like literally winded from that. <laughs> okay, I've got some good news and bad news. Which one do you guys want first? I'm gonna go with bad news. We have just run out of Tabasco on the boat. This is a bad day for me. Cause I eat this shit on everything. Good news though is, look, you notice something different about me? I am wearing a t-shirt because the sun came back out and it's getting warmer. It was so cold the last week or so, and now it's starting to warm up a little bit. We just crossed through 42 degrees north, and uh, it's day 17, it's Saturday. It looks like we got four more days for a Wednesday arrival, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We just made a, a 200 mile day yesterday, and the wind died this morning, so. We are on track. It's gonna be super ripping wind in the last couple days, so we're getting ready for that and kind of preparing our, ourselves mentally and getting the boat ready. Let's go take a look around. It is day 17, and I am making crepes. Crepes for breakfast this morning. This will be the last chance because one, we're out of flour, and two, it's gonna be rough the next couple days. Come on, see. Tomorrow we're gonna hit some really heavy weather, so we are getting the boat ready to hit that weather 
So we're taking the first and second reef from the main and moving them up one to the second and third reef. And then we're gonna put a second reef in the mizzen. So right now we're just gonna head up wind, drop both the mainsails and the mizzen sail, and uh, fall off and just use the headsails. You will see. I forgot to tell the owner what we're doing. Yeah, it's okay. So we're putting the main and mizzen down so we can um, switch the reefs right. to get ready for tomorrow. Yep, sounds good. little tiny sail. <laughs> it's a little dinky one. We have a now. All right, there's no good way to get this boom vang off of here because it's spring loaded and it's leaking hydraulic oil bad. Uh, we, we punctured the line. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna just leave it on and we're gonna use the preventer and the main sheet as the boom uh, crutch and we're gonna have to do that when we get in port because it's spring loaded and it's gonna hurt someone. This thing here, this pin's gotta come out. That means the boom has to go way up. All right guys, so what we did now is we just moved the dinghy away from our winch so we can reef our staysail if we need to. This thing has been in the way the whole time and uh, definitely needed to be moved. Experiencing uh, maybe 30 miles an hour of wind in the next couple of days, so we'll see what happens. It's a crappy day outside and I'm not even gonna go outside and try to film but instead I'm gonna show you guys what we do to get weather because that's always a question that I get asked so this is what I use it's called an Iridium Go it is a satellite communications device that gives you GPS readout on the screen oh that looks cool and then we'll communicate with the Iridium network the satellite network for phone and weather data so you can use this little guy with your cell phone as your satellite phone. So there's no more of those big, clunky, huge satellite phones that you've seen in the past. This will take care of all of that. We put a PredictWind SIM card in here and got a PredictWind subscription before we left. And now I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we use this little guy to get PredictWind weather while we're at sea, anywhere we're at. Let's go back to Grib Offshore. And we'll zoom into the area we got. And this is now, so the way that you read this, you can either ch choose down here to have the grib file. This is the actual grib, the direction arrows, or the wind strength with lines. And this is the way I like to read it, so this is the way we're gonna do it. Up here, you can select to play, to uh, go through the week, and you can select the speed you, you move that bar here and then the time it says right here so right now it is 10:40 on friday we're going to push play and now it's going through now it's tonight tomorrow morning saturday afternoon saturday night sunday morning and so on so on i'm going to stop the play automatic play we're just going to kind of cycle through to see what it's going to do and it looks pretty good for us. It's gonna be really strong wind uh, coming down here. This is 40 knots right there, wow. So it looks like we're gonna get becalmed for about half a day. 
and then right around oh no about a day almost two days and then right around sunday morning 6 6 a.m the wind will start filling in we'll be able to sail down you got to take into account that you're going to be moving too you know this is we're going to be doing about six seven knots so that's about three of those squares per day so if, if you just measure it one two three I'm, I'm thinking we're going to be about here tomorrow and that would be about this time so as we're going south we're going good we're going good we're going good we're going to be down here and then it's going to become us uh, it might not we might we might be able to outrun it if we go fast enough we'll just keep going down this direction but regardless we can see that we're going to run into some very strong wind when we uh, get a little closer within a, two days of san francisco okay so overall great tool it's not always correct but it does give you a lot of really cool data there's a lot more to it if you want to learn more you can go to predictwind.com and you can sign up for, there for a trial to use with your web-based browser and get to know the system that way you can orient yourself before you decide to invest okay last thing let's talk about the price of this thing this costs seven or eight hundred bucks the predict win subscription is 99 dollars for three months or 250 dollars for the year the actual data usage costs about 140 dollars per month for unlimited or i think 89 dollars per month for 150 minutes or 50 dollars per month for five minutes doesn't really make sense to do that plan the the lowest plan if you're going to be going offshore using this thing every day because you're going to end up spending more money than anything else on minutes best deal if you're going to do two downloads a day and have this as your backup sat phone is to do the unlimited data uh, that way you're not getting hit with a bill that's two three hundred dollars for the month overall great tool definitely recommend it i won't go to sea without it this is called a delorum inreach this is a slightly cheaper option which will give you weather data up to two or three days out but it sucks it's very unreliable and it's not very user friendly so if you really want to get weather data and this is a serious passage this is the way to go one last last thing about this it will give you tracking data if you want people to follow you if you have a predict win sim card so there's a couple different companies that sell sim cards for this thing blue cosmo is one uh, get the predict win sim card and you can have predict win track you uh, by emailing them and telling them look i want to set this up and it'll give you a custom link with your boat name and say this is tracking for you have fun good luck and anybody that has that link can now go on to predict wind it's pretty much the industry standard now it's cool because they can see the wind data where you're at and where you've been so get it we got it good all right that wind that we were waiting for arrived uh, last night was really rough and we've got gusts of 30 knots uh, pretty big waves i'd say like in the 12 foot range and uh, the boat's taking it like a champ, but every once in a while, we'll get hit by a wave and just <laughs> knocked over. Okay, so here's my bunk. And this is my, like, sort of lee cloth that keeps me from rolling out. And last night it got so rough that this thing broke. Check that out. So let's undo this and lay it down. You can see it rips the screws right out. So I'm going to need to fix that. So I'm going to go find some stuff to fix it and uh, some new screws and <laughs> get that thing done because, man, I could have been thrown out of this thing all the way to the floor and that would hurt. <laughs> Aaron and Jake just put the third reef into the main. Thank you guys. Good job. That was a little scary for them and wet. All right, how did that feel? Wet. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> Got a little wet. Were you scared? Yeah. <laughs> That's part of sailing. Go it. <laughs> Looks like we're just about the right power right now for the wind gusts. Uh, it's sustained like 22 to 25 knots. Were you getting nervous last night? This morning. A little bit. Yeah. Are you feeling better now that we have the third reef in? Oh, yeah. I was going to come get you. If it hit 31 again, I was going to come get your ass and say, hey, it's time, baby. 
<clears throat> but it settled down for a while, and then when Aaron came up, it started getting gnarly again. So you came up just about the right time. So we're about 220 miles away, which puts us home tomorrow afternoon. Yay. Now uh, these are pretty pretty wild conditions. I'm gonna try to capture this on camera for you, but camera never really captures the, the wave state very well. Just know it's crazy. You guys aren't going to want to be down here if she starts to break up. <laughs> so this thing works its way down into the canvas and then we start taking some wind and the canvas pushes on the top of it. <laughs> and when it's just alarming and we're like, oh my god, what is that? <laughs> it scared the sh out of all of us. Did you guys think it was the boat sinking alarm? For a minute, yeah. Dude, I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm glad none of us screamed like a girl. It was just like a solid like five seconds of a horn <laughs> before we were like, oh. We are absolutely screaming, doing eight or nine knots all day in about 25 to 30 mile an hour winds. It's awesome. We've got about 160 miles to go, so I'm figuring about 20 hours. That puts us one hour before low tide when we get to San Francisco, so we're gonna try to shoot the gate. We just got the tide info from Mark's wife. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. This is gonna be cool. It should be like this until about three o'clock in the morning and then we'll, we'll lose the wind, put the motor on, go right for the gate. It'd be cool to sail under the Golden Gate Bridge. Good day today, good day. I just got blasted by water. <laughs> sitting there reading my books. Sterling Hayden, Voyage of 1896, great book. And, uh, oh man, I got blasted. Okay, it's day 21. This is the day we're gonna arrive. We saw land. There's an island off of San Francisco called, what is that island called? Southeast Farallon. Southeast Farrell Island and... Farallon. Oh, Farallon. Farallon, yeah. Southeast Farallon. We just sighted it. So we saw land. Still haven't smelled the land yet, but um, we're motoring into it. So four or five more hours and we're gonna be in the marina in the slip. All of us are pretty excited about it, as you can tell, especially Jake. Look at him. This is Jake excited. He's excited. Ryan's back there trying to catch a fish because <laughs> he's gonna go visit his family. He wants to bring him like a whole bunch of different cuts of fish. <laughs> and he's got a whole albacore. It might be a kingfish in the freezer. Just a big block of fish. That's gonna be nice. Let's go check him out. What you doing, buddy? Hey, we're gonna catch ourselves one more tuna. For the fam? For the fam, that's right. They're gonna love it. <laughs> I had a pretty good passage, man. How about you? I did too, man. Good stuff. Good sailing. Yeah, man. Good sailing, buddy. We can smell the land now. It smells like garbage. You smell that? It stinks. Dude, it's nasty. Take me back out to the sea. <laughs> Turn around, boys! We're going to Japan. Last big passage I went on where I smelled the land was Easter Island, and it smelled really good, like dirt. This one? Smells like I've got my head in a trash can. I swear. Not too nice. Oh. <laughs> That's tasty. I can taste it in my mouth. The humpback whales are here in force, welcoming us into the bay. It's nice. Harbor Patrol Half Moon Bay. This is sailing vessel to Vega, channel 160. Definitely like Philly Point Harbor Patrol on 16. This is not an emergency. Which is 74, right? Harbor Patrol. 
Control, this is sailing vessel to Vega, over. Hey, to Vega, this is Toy Point Harbor Patrol, go ahead. Harbor Patrol, we are about two miles out from uh, Half Moon Bay Marina. We'll be entering the harbor now. Uh, we were asked to contact you when we arrived, over. Good copy, Captain. Are you the sailing vessel coming in uh, actually from Hawaii? Yes, sir, that's us, over. Roger, well, welcome. Um, we have you down for a slip in C-36, C-36. Okay, that's great. I have a map of the harbor in front of me. Is that the, uh, the most outbound uh, slip on the, uh, the C side of the slips? Closest to the field there. Uh, yes, sir. It's not, it's, it's not an end tag, but it's fairly outbound on C dock, and it is on the C side. It's the closest one to the field up. Okay, I understand. Uh, it looks pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna we're gonna give it a wide berth, steer clear of the reef, and uh, dock in C36. Roger, sounds good, Captain. And then we've got a, uh, a temporary office up here. If you come up, I can get you a key card because C uh, dock is key card access only. Great. See you soon. Thank you very much for the info, and uh, we'll be standing by on channel 16. Roger, Captain. We'll be standing by at 7416. Over now. What you doing in that hole? Oh, just doing a little, just doing a little bit of scrubbing with my, with my brush, <laughs> my toilet brush. Lock him in there. That's <laughs> where he stays. Despite being unable to sail under the Golden Gate Bridge, as it took us just a bit longer and the tides were not in our favor, the mood was jovial and the crew was relieved at arriving safely at Half Moon Bay, California. It was a 3,000 mile journey that none of us will ever forget. We all tip our hats to Alvin Mason for designing such a seaworthy yacht. And now it's game on for getting the big girl into the slip safely. So we made it. <laughs> yes, we did. We are here. The Cheers. So just so everybody knows, this is Diana. Everybody say hi to Diana. Say hi, Diana. Hello. <laughs> Smart's wife. She didn't come with us because she did the last passage over from San Diego to Hawaii and didn't have a good time. Wasn't wasn't for you. We heard you got seasick. Very. Um, and then and then you got land sick after being seasick. Yes, ten days. Ten days? Oh man, babe, I'm so it was sorry. Bad. That's it a terrible was bad. day. It was bad. It yeah. So that was ten days on top of the nineteen days that she was sick on the passage. Yes. And how but many I survived. I mean, yeah. you know, I didn't go crazy. I did question my sanity while I was on the boat. I was worried if I would. Were come you talking back okay. to yourself? Did you catch yourself talking to yourself? Like, did you see anything? Yes. I didn't. Well, did you know, you I was like, I hope I get out of this okay. <laughs> but you're, you're not crazy unless you respond. Oh, no, no, I didn't <laughs> respond. I didn't respond to okay. myself. Okay, good. I just threw questions out there and, you know, hoped that was going to be okay. I was. How long yeah. was the last passage? How many miles? Uh, it was right at 2,500. 25. Yeah. And this one was like right at 3290. Yeah. Cool. We went a lot further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the same amount of time. I have to say it was pretty badass. It was pretty amazing. What were some of your favorite parts? Uh, the big waves. Oh, on the last day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so if you, guys were, if you guys were following our track, we hit, uh, the trades got really strong and they were, they were gusting to 36, 37. 15 wow. to 20 foot waves. I'd say, yeah. Something I'd like say that. some of those wow. were 20 foot waves. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Walls pretty of water awesome. coming in. I mean, like the real meaning of the word awesome is, you know, something awe inspiring in that. It's a 70,000 boat, pound boat doing nine knots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we were taking them on the beam, and I tell you, to Vega, she would take these waves and she'd like slide down the face of them as they were going under us, and then she'd just get right back. And she didn't, like a couple times, one would hit her ass and she'd kind of flail a little bit, but. She tracks like a train. Oh my yeah. God. 
Dude, Amazing. this boat is made for yeah. the Pacific. Like, built. And it doesn't kick awake! What is that? It's smooth. I've never seen a boat not kick awake. I kind of like awake on a boat. I was, I, was like, I was looking back to be like, oh, we're going tw 10 knots. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> that's, like, no, that's our stealth. Nothing. It's stealth. Yeah, it's like a stealth boat. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my we caught fish. We caught a bunch of fish. How many fish? Two Dorado. One of them we didn't get because we didn't make our homemade gaff. Oh, we should get the gaff. Oh, oh he we, took it we, apart. We, we oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's less dangerous it's now. Kind of dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> we took a boat hook and turned it upside down and put a screw through the telescoping part to make it one piece and then put a huge Massive hook fish hook on, in it. on the other <laughs> end. And then, and then lashed it, it so that it wouldn't so swivel. dangerous. It was yeah. so dangerous. But it worked. I'm so surprised that thing didn't hurt anyone. It almost did a couple times. It almost, a almost got me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Get that thing out of my face! <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. So two Dorado. Yeah. Like seven, a sailfish. A sailfish. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Yeah. Never seen one of those. Uh, a bunch of albacore. You know, I have. Yeah. I don't think I've ever caught an albacore, and if I have, it's only been like one. Mm -hmm. But up in the in the cold, they were everywhere. Like that's sure. amazing. You yeah. guys, every once in a while, would put the put the hooks out and. 10 minutes Bam. later, have a fish. Catching them, yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet we, we caught, caught 10 what? fish. what, albacore and bluefin? Yellowfin? No, we never got a no, yellowfin. We never got a we yellowfin, got a, no. We got a kingfish. Oh, yeah. Kingfish, that's right. Mm, I thought you said you got a yellowfin. Probably no. six yeah. albacore, a kingfish, two dorado, uh, a sailfish, which was super cool. That was amazing. Which actually, Jake said it was a, was a short-nosed spearfish. He looked it up and it, it was some kind of, he thought it was some kind of spearfish that also had like a sail, sail. fin, but well, I don't know. He I thought know. the sailfish had like a bigger sail on top. Well, it was a smaller one. I don't know. Who knows? More research. Well, we figured out how to make it taste good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really wasn't that good of a fish. But it wasn't no. that bad either. No. No. It was, it was kind of fishy. <laughs> kind of. Um, you have to put citrus on it, otherwise yeah. it's not good. Yeah. So what is the what is the trick for a really fishy fish? You say you eat bonita, right? Yeah. Which are yeah. like the the beef of the ocean. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're bloody as hell. They're bloody as hell. They, those you have to cut the head off and dr bleed them in salt water, get the blood vein out, clean them right away, and then and then um, eat them right away. And then they're not they're not so bad. And you hang them in salt water, yep. like a bucket. Yep. Or you just and the throw salt them. water, I think, keeps the veins open, so they bleed out. Then, cool. And then it's not. It's even good raw then if you do that right. Really? Yep. Raw bonita. Raw bonita. Okay. It's not that bad. I'm gonna. I'll put that to the taste. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah. But the sailfish was putting citrus on it kills that funky fishy flavor that it's got. Yeah. And it worked pretty it good. It's a little yeah. funky flavored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you made a good marinade though. Yeah. Yeah, we chopped some of it. We chopped, we filleted half of it, and then put the rest in the steaks. Steaks, yeah. And those we were marinated good. them. Oh, they're good. You put yeah, them on the barbecue. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. That's next next sailfish I have. I'm doing steaks, and then barbecuing them in that marinade. Yeah. Which was? That was a lot of citrus juice. It was orange juice. You put was, an orange. It was in orange there. juice, lemon juice, and lime juice. All three citruses were in there. Uh, I think like, it's citri. There was a whole, <laughs> yeah, it was citri. I put a whole head of garlic in there and smashed it up. Oh, cool. And then an onion, and then some bell peppers, mm -hmm. and diced that all up. Wow. I threw in a ton of, right, bell peppers. ton of black pepper, and um, a little bit of salt, and that was it. And let them soak in that juice. Mm -mm -mm. Try and it, it was fish good. gold. Yeah. We're giving you right yeah. now. <laughs> you guys write that down. Actually, I think I'm gonna like put the recipe right on the screen as you're writing it. <laughs> With the exact amount. Yeah. Dash of this. Dash of a this. bunch of this. <laughs> <laughs> we went uh, swimming. Oh yeah, yeah, we jumped off the boat uh, in the cold, Fourth of July. Cold water and that was cool. Water. That's a badass drone footage. Yeah. yeah. Jake got a hook in the leg. Uh, Jake's not here. He had to catch a flight out. Too bad. Yeah. Yep. You don't get his dry humor. He probably wouldn't have said much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he might. You never know. Yeah. He's a good guy. He got we a, like he, Jake. I can't believe he didn't even make a sound. Didn't even say ouch. Dude didn't even tell us it was in his leg. I'd have been like, guys, hold the fish down. I have a huge hook in my leg. It wasn't even like one of those little treble hooks. It was like a, a solid, it was a number a eight sea thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> and then he just pushed it through. 
Yeah. Oh no, yeah. he didn't just he, push no. it through. No, no, he had to he take the fillet it. knife oh. and cut, cut his, his own skin to get the rest of the hook through, and then he crimped the did bar, that barb. Barb. Oh. Just did it silently. And then after all that. His girlfriend comes along and injects him with like pure iodine and almost pure passed iodine. out. He almost pure. passed out. Uh, he was like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, are you okay? <laughs> oh, I'm okay. I'm all right. <laughs> Nicely yeah. done, Doc. Thanks. Yep. Oh, the Doc doctored me up too. I got a, I got a knife like kind of in the hand, maybe like an inch. I think I hit the bone, honestly, because it still hurts. And this is like two weeks later. Tell me, did you feel a twang? And it felt a twang. <laughs> it was like four o'clock in the morning, and the fish gets on, and I'm like, "Ooh, everybody's gonna love me. I'm gonna get this fish in. I'm gonna clean the fish, have the fillets, and be like, yeah, I caught a fish. Yeah, no big deal." No, he went and stabbed himself. <laughs> Instead, I'm like bleeding all over Mark's boat. <laughs> like, there's there's pieces of me on Tobago now. But... Yeah, there is. There's still I'm still finding like dots of blood places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got some amazing footage of dolphins. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. 360 yeah. footage of dolphins. Yeah. Yeah, we should, I'm sure you'll yeah. have that in the video somewhere. Uh -huh. Hopefully. Well, I can't put 360 footage in the video with the regular footage because okay. the 2D and the 3D mm. don't go together, but right. I can put it up and link it. Mm. Well, we saw a big old pot of them. Yeah. yeah. Ryan has a 360 cam, so we decided that we were gonna set that up one day, just for like half yeah. an hour. So we're gonna put like a half an hour of us bullshitting out in the cockpit and sailing, but 360 style, so you can take your mouse and like look everywhere, which it all looks the same, sorry, but <laughs> this is why people don't do videos out to sea, it's boring. <laughs> like all you have for scenery is blue. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. that's always good. That's true. Well, you said you saw the fluorescent dolphin. The dolphin. Oh, fluorescent yeah. dolphin. That was really cool. Yeah. I've only Dolphins seen at that. night. Yeah. yeah. I've sailed over 30,000 miles, probably like 33, 34,000, and I've only seen that four times. Wow. Wow, we're lucky. Yeah. Dude, wow, that was, it is cool. one of the most beautiful things. That's the third time I've seen yeah. it. Yeah. It's yeah. like something out of Avatar. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It's yeah. like little fairy torpedoes that are like. <laughs> yeah, they're all over the And they're, they're like playing with each other, and then they go down, and you can see them like 30 feet down, and then Spinning they come around each and other, they play with like diving. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's so amazing. Cool. I almost missed it because Jake had to put his contacts in. <laughs> yeah. And I had to wake you guys up twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark and I, we got to witness an amazing shooting star. We did? Oh, it was yeah. a meteor that lasted for probably five seconds. Five seconds. <sighs> All the way across long, the sky. Long enough for me to say, Mark, Mark, look, look! And him to run across the boat and still see it. Wow. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That's neat. That's yeah. crazy. And it was orange. Yeah. Really? Wow. And then it started like, yeah, apart. breaking Break apart. Out. Yeah. Yeah, that was a UFO. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been. I mean, it was a flying object that wasn't. It was, and so. you didn't identify. Good thing we're on a sailboat because they can't track your heat signature on a sailboat. There you go. Is that true? <laughs> Good thing I had my tinfoil hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he wore a tinfoil hat the whole the whole time. <laughs> but they couldn't read my thoughts. <laughs> I got some pretty cool drone footage at the end of the beautiful, beautiful, that was really beautiful cool. footage. Yeah. I'm really happy with that. I, I got a new Mavic Two before this, Mavic Two Pro before this. Uh, run and it was awesome. And Ryan still has all his fingers. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Do. Ryan, Ryan oh, the first yeah. time he caught it, he caught it and it like <laughs> chopped the top of his finger off. He's like, I'm not catching that <laughs> thing again. And so we gave him some big leather gloves. Worked and much when, better. You, when you caught it the, the second time, I heard. <laughs> yeah. I know. I called him his falconry gloves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked. Come back to me. Come Atticus. to me, Madrone. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, we ate really well. We yeah, did. We did. Yeah. Thank you, Diana. That was all your yeah, fault. Thank you very much. Master. Very, very good provisioning. Yeah. 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 Glad you enjoyed it. We had lots of snacks. We flush snacks. with everything. Snacks we had, were good. We had chocolate covered mangoes. Salty, sweet. Oh, we yeah. Had, had chocolate Granola bars. Granola bars. Yeah, chocolate bars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chips. There's still some chips up. Yeah. We even had some bitchin' sauce. We had bitchin' <laughs> sauce. That lasted the whole time. Yeah. It did. Yeah. It was like the first day, or maybe two or three days, we had that out with every meal. We were eating it. And yeah. Then it just kind of. We took a break from it. Like, <laughs> we forgot <I> about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
It's enough bitching for today. <laughs> <laughs> too bitching. Yeah. <laughs> too bitching. Yeah. This was my third crossing. This was me your too. second, mm -hmm. your third, my third, my third. Your, your first, and point one. And my third. Your third. Wow. Mm -hmm. We're all we're all sailors types. <laughs> hey, that's good. Hey. <laughs> Yo ho ho! And a bottle of Pinot Noir. <laughs> <laughs> We're classy okay. sailors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Pinky out. All right, so that's the highlight reel. We got blessed with weather. Uh, the crew was awesome. The provisioning was great. The boat was amazing. If you have the money and you want a real boat, buy this boat. This one I here. wish that I could <laughs> buy this myself. It would. I wish I could afford it. I, it would be perfect. It's made to go places. Uh, it's true. Okay, till next time. Peace, love, hippie beats. <laughs> <laughs> Mahala.